One night at one show, I received 11 chocolate cakes. And it was local, so I took them home. And that is an argument that nobody in this building has ever had at 3 o'clock in the morning. Because you don't just walk into the house with 11 cakes. You make some noise. You know. And I walk in with the last two cakes, and my girlfriend's in the kitchen, and she's like, what the hell is this? I'm trying to be cute. It's a bakery. Where did you get all this cake? I said, baby, the people at the show brought it. Are you going to eat all of it? Eventually. I'm not going to do it in one hit, you know, freaking two hours later. Clear! How do you know someone isn't trying to poison you? With cake? Are you serious? It's like you live by the cake, you die by the cake, you know? No. Uh-uh. So we're going back and forth, right? We wake up Frankie, and Frankie walks into the kitchen at 3 o'clock in the morning, and he's all, What's going on? <laughs> Where did all the cake come from? The people at the show brought it. Tell them I said thank you. I'll tell them you said thank you, Frankie. Gabriel, how come they bring you cake? Because 10 years ago, I did a joke where I said, I love chocolate cake. Now people bring me cake. You should say you love Transformers. I'll start doing it, right? So my girl's like, baby, put Frankie to bed. I go, Frankie, you gotta go back to sleep. Mm. Want some cake? Yeah. So I grab one of these tiny cakes that somebody brought me, one of those little tiny ones that has the plastic cover and the sticker on the side, and I handed it to him. I go, here. He goes, a little piece? I go, dude, it's a small cake. You could have the whole thing. And the look that came over his face at 3 o'clock in the morning was like he got a gift from God. Because I said, here, and he was like, oh, he heard me. Take it to your room. I went to go take him to school the next morning. He's in the bathroom crying. Hey, are you okay? My stomach. Your stomach? Too much cake? Yeah. Was it good? Hell yeah. I'll see you in the car. 20 minutes later, he comes to the car and he's all sweaty. <sighs> you all right? What happened? I blew it up. Get in the car. <laughs> I get him to school 45 minutes late. And usually when I drop him off, you guys, I leave him on the side of the school and they have like a drop-off zone with cones and a supervisor to make sure that your kid gets off safely. When you're 45 minutes late, there's nobody there. So I left him in front of the school. And apparently that's a no-no. You're not supposed to do that. I didn't know, you know. <laughs> go for it. I'm not supposed to. I know, to just go. You're late. Go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Out of nowhere, here comes the principal. And I know it's the principal because he's like, it's the principal, it's the principal, it's the principal, it's the principal. I'm like, dude, relax. I'm 30. I don't give a damn. <laughs> here comes the principal. Sir? Sir, this is not the designated drop-off area. Please take your child to the other side of the school. You cannot leave him here. I was like, watch this. Señora, no sé lo que está diciendo. Estoy dejando a mi hijo aquí. Aquí va la escuela. Su mamá no se levantó. Yo no sé qué está pasando. That's how you do it, homeboy. That's how you do it. That principal was amazing because she was like, Usted no puede dejar su hijo aquí. Saca la vuelta a la otra lado de la escuela. Allá sí, sí, aquí, no, no. Allá sí, sí, aquí, no, no. Yo no soy pendejo.